Peace and blessings everyone. Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Edgy Wenker and we have a very informative program for you this evening. Domestic violence, of course, is a social ill. Other social ills we seem to be like other socialists, we seem to be powerless to do anything about. Um, the spiritual component of our social ills has been acknowledged. Therefore, the question is, what role must the church play in the eradication of social ills generally and domestic violence in particular? Uh, this evening, we are going to discuss that question with a member of the church, a clergyman, pastor, and also we are going to talk about the upcoming Domestic Violence Awareness Conference on October 12th and 13th during the observance of Domestic Violence Awareness Month facilitated by the Agape Life Total Center and the Office of Gender Affairs. So we're going to, well, I forgot to introduce my very, very special guest, which is uh, Akil Johnson who happened to pop into town uh, this, this week and we try to fit him in into a nice program. Uh, many of us know Akil uh, from uh, his broadcast on ZBVI and, and other, other, medium here in the, other media here in the Virgin Islands. Uh, a young man who came public with the fact that he was a uh, victim of domestic violence, but uh, specifically uh, sexual abuse. Uh, wrote a book. He's a new author of a new book, also a poet. We're going to be talking with him about his experience uh, as a, a victim of domestic violence. And I must say that uh, the new Domestic Violence Act that's uh, going to be coming on stream in the next um, few weeks uh, has now come to include sexual abuse as a part of domestic violence, as a domestic violence. It's, not, it's no longer uh, a, separate, a separate issue. So we'll talk a little bit about that and we can uh, really get deep into the discussion about the spiritual aspects with the pastor and the role of the church uh, right after these words from our sponsors. So you keep it locked right here to Spotlight. When I come back, I'll introduce my guest. This program is sponsored by the law firm of J.S. Archibald & Co. and by the trust company J.S. Archibald Trust Services Limited, both of Rotown Tortola BVI. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'd like to introduce my guests. Uh, first, I'd like to start with Ms. Lynette Smith. Ms. Lynette Smith is a member of the Agape Life Total, Agape Total Life Center. Uh, many of you know Agape. Uh, very, very interesting church. I've, I've been there, I think, once or twice and uh, enjoyed, the, enjoyed the service. She's a coordinator of, uh, one of the coordinators of the conference, a domestic violence conference coming up on October the 12th and the, and the, thir and the 13th. is also a, a manager, a branch manager at Scotia Bank BVI Limited. Welcome to Spotlight. It's good to have you. Thank you. Yes. And Pastor Simon. Pastor Simon is a author of a couple of books and he'll tell us what they are. But he's been a pastor at the, at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Rotown for more than 19 years, a motivational speaker, a counselor, poet, author, and a family life educator. Uh, he's going to talk to us about the role of the church uh, in uh, mitigating social ills. Welcome to the spotlight. Thank you. Yes, and of course, Akil Johnson, I mentioned you earlier, is a young poet, just put out a new book. A new book, a spanking brand new book. It caused lies. I never quite believed the emancipation of Akil Johnson. We're going to talk to him a little bit about his book, and we're going to talk about uh, his experience, his domestic violence experience. I want to start off with you, Miss Smith of Agape Total Life Center. I'm happy to to see the church involved. I've been talking about the church being involved in the eradication of 
social ills for a very long time and, and doing more and coming down into the community more like Jesus. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so I'm happy. I'm happy to see uh, Agape taking a, a leadership role in this in this endeavor. Uh, what was the motivation for becoming in, in, involved? Well, um, part of the vision for Agape Total Life Center, it says um, aid for the destitute and brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. And when we look around the community in the BVI, we can see that there are a lot of issues with domestic violence. It's in the newspapers, it's in our jobs, it's in our homes, it's wherever we turn. And I had the opportunity to um, attend a conference in the US about two years ago, and part of it dealt with domestic violence and these sort of issues and the idea came why can't we bring some of this information and get the church more involved in helping to eradicate domestic violence in the BVI. Um, it's not just the government's responsibility, it's not just the family support network's responsibility or the police responsibility. These people sit in our churches every Sunday and we have a responsibility as the church to really help and deal with these issues in our society. Okay. And you got involved. Now, where is the function going to be? Where is the conference going to be held? The conference is going to be for two days, on the f um, Friday and the Saturday. On the Friday and the afternoon at 3.30, we have a session at, all. as a matter of fact, all sessions on Friday will be held at the Anglican Church in Wotown. Friday afternoon at 3.30 is a session specifically for pastors and ministers of the gospel. And in that session, we'll be talking about how the, how the, those people in leadership positions within the church can really deal with domestic violence and, and help to bring a, a better awareness and help to eradicate it. And then on the Friday evening is the opening of the conference. And that starts at 7.30 also at the Anglican Church. And um, we have the guest speaker is um, Leslie Vernick. She's a licensed Christian counselor from Pennsylvania. And the topic for that night will be, Lord, I just want to be happy building healthy relationships. And then on a Saturday, we have all this session. Starts at 9 in the morning, ends at about 5 in the afternoon. And again, we're going to be having, Leslie's going to be the keynote speaker. She's going to do three sessions that day. But the first session in the morning is going to be um, the emotionally destructive relationship, which I think is a topic that a lot of us tend to avoid, but it's something that really we, we need to deal with. We talk about the physical abuse, but we really need to home in on the emotional abuse also along with some other topics that she will have throughout the day. <laughs> who, who is the conference geared towards? The conference is geared towards the entire community. Entire community. We want to see everybody come out. Because in the BVI, everybody, it's a Christian community. Everybody goes to church. So we don't want to say it's just geared towards the people in the church. We want everybody to come out because you may not um, be directly involved or uh, um, somebody that's been abused or something, experienced domestic violence, but I'm sure you know of somebody who's experienced it or who's had some... Okay. Is, it, is there a fee to come to participate? Yes, there is a fee. You know there's always a fee. There is a fee. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a fee. I just, it just, just <laughs> yes, we, there is a fee because we really need to offset the cost of having a conference. It, it does cost money to do something like this. So um, the cost for the conference is $60 if you re register after September 30th. If you register before September 30th, that's, the cost is $50. Now if you're only coming on the Friday evening, that's $25. And if you're only coming on the Saturday, it's $40. The Saturday session, that session includes lunch. So your $40 if it's a Saturday, it includes your lunch, and for the whole weekend, $50 if you register before September 30th, and $60 if you register after September 30th. And now, I, I, I was under the impression that it was for persons who are pastors and what, uh, uh, to bring awareness and information to them to help them to to, to mitigate the circumstances that they may develop in their church or in, that they might see in the community. But it's for anybody, and it, what, what, what will come out? What can I expect to get out of it? 
okay. besides being aware of domestic violence. You can expect to get the tools and information on how you as an individual can really deal with this stuff, deal with domestic violence. How, what steps can you take? You know, sometimes we, we, we are good at theory, but the practical steps, the things that you actually need to do, you'll walk away from the conference knowing some of the practical steps that you need to do in order to, to help somebody, or for you yourself, to, to get out of a situation where you're in. Okay, so you can help another person that yes. you know in, in domestic violence, and if you are a, a victim of domestic violence yourself, it'll help you to, exactly. to mitigate your own personal circumstances. Exactly. All right, exactly. cool. Uh, I'm gonna come to you, uh, Pastor Simon. Uh, what's your role and your relationship to the conference? Do you have a, a relationship to the conference? So. Well, I'm here tonight in terms of uh, to you know, assist with the education and the talk from the church's perspective. And so, you know, it's a collaboration in terms of, uh, you know, seeking to get the word out because, uh, you know, lots of folks listen to Spotlight and we didn't want to miss this opportunity as well to, you know, get a little of the education out as well. And so, you know, as in, I was invited as a family life educator, you know, to share, you know, somewhat uh, on the topic even tonight as, you know, a, a little appetizer, you know, to what is to come for the, uh, the conference. I, I know. I notice it's being held in the Anglican Church. Agape is one of the facilitators, along with the, the Office of Gender Affairs. Exactly. And then it's being held in the Anglican Church, and the Adventist minister is here. I mean, that's some good signs. That's some good signs. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the perspective of the Adventist Church is that uh, on social issues, we would join with every single person, you know, who is involved to, you know, get right to get justice and that kind of stuff. So this is not uncommon in terms of you know our social involvement so the the, the clergy should really be some a, a, a person or someone or a church should be a place where persons who are experiencing domestic violence could come and, and, and get support and you would be trained in that way do the pastors have that kind of training is that part of your, your training where you are able to counsel on various social ills well there is a component in just about every theology degree mm -hmm. you know but to really get into the crux of the matter one needs to specialize you know in in terms of you know to get into family ministry or into counseling but there is a component there that you know if you're a pastor you've been uh, you have graduated from a reputable school then you know um, it's almost certain that you would have done you know classes in counseling and you know reacting to uh, victims and so forth but uh, for you to really get into it deeply you know it, it's a specialized area that some pastors choose you know in terms of not everybody has the same gifts and so sometimes Sometimes individuals in this uh, area of giftedness, you know, would become specialists to, you know, deal with the subject and to provide help. But most pastors should be able to provide help. And when it gets too difficult, uh, we are trained also to make referrals, you know, to individuals who have specialized. So, you know, it needs a whole, you know, networking system to work. Now, I know the Methodist Church got involved uh, quite some time back, actually, um, a few years. Uh, ago, and they even set up a, a, a family support network with a place where persons could go and be sheltered and protected until they are able to relocate to, to get out of the situation because you know sometimes it becomes a life and death situation. And so I know, but the the, the other members of the church community seem to have been lagging behind. Why, 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 why was that? Or am I, but my perception is off. Okay. Well, in terms of when, when uh, we look at in terms of response to domestic violence, sometimes we look merely at a reactionary approach. You know, when I look at it, I look at it twofold. In that uh, there, you know, not there's not only the reaction, but there's also proaction. In that, you know, I bless lots of little babies, you know, regularly. And those individuals would one day become youth, 
they become adults. And these are the individuals in the future who will be perpetrating violence. You know, uh, the best time to catch these individuals is when they're still young, to imbibe in them certain values, you know, training them in anger management, conflict resolution, you know, uh, boundary setting, you know. So the, the, uh, the church, you know, is an excellent place for this kind of education to happen. And it does happen in terms of that. And so we don't only look at the reaction in terms of, okay, yes, it's good that we can shelter someone. That's excellent because when a person is a victim, you have to give priority to that. But the church is in a wonderful position to deal with it before it happens. Even, you know, the best time to deal with uh, your health is before you get sick to, you know, get yourself strong and to get yourself prepared to build your resistance and so on. And so some of us focus more on that in terms of prevention and then when it comes, you know, we deal with it. But, you know, prevention is very important, you know, in dealing with this, uh, this ill, this social ill called domestic violence. Agape Church, they, is this something that they have been doing regularly in, in the church setting itself where uh, you have instances of domestic violence, uh, members of a church or families of church members, because I know that no, um, no church person is going to be involved in domestic violence. <laughs> <laughs> But what I, what, what I meant, what I meant was, what I meant was, you know, persons that you know. Is that something that you, you have a constant service in in the church as part of the ministry? Well, I know that our pastor is a, a, a licensed counselor, mm -hmm. and she does offer um, counseling not just to the church members, but to the whole the wide community and a whole quite a number of people within the community seek her out for counseling. But. Um, also, the church is also um, supposed to be a haven, right, for, for the broken-hearted person. So what we are saying is that not just Agape Total Life Center, but the churches within the whole BVI, they have to be more vocal. We have to be more vocal about domestic violence. We cannot just um, sit by and... Um, covering it up because a lot of it happens in the church. We have persons within the church also who are abused, whether physically, emotionally, or sexually, and sometimes it's known and, and so forth. And then we have people in the community, in their jobs, as I said before, who experience these things. And it's not always possible for, for the Family Support Network to touch those people. But it's possible for a lot of those people to get help right within the church if the pastors were um, a little bit more uh, maybe aggressive towards it and spoke, to, spoke about it more from the pulpit because the pastors have a lot of authority. People really look up to them. Um, and listen to what they say. They seek them out when they're having problems and so forth. So we need to, I think, from my personal perspective, um, we need to stop covering it up. And we need to expose it. And it needs to be exposed in the church as well as in the community. Akil, I want to bring you in here briefly because I have to take a break. So when I come back, I'm gonna, we're going to get to, uh, to you. But we are hearing now about the, the, the church's desire to become involved. Uh, when you are a younger person, and I know you're a very long time, mm -hmm. and a, a brother who's always been in the community. I'm still young. Right. <laughs> a brother who's always been in the community, who's mm -hmm. always been outspoken, who's always been making a contribution. Mm -hmm. And you would never have been able to tell until you came forward. Mm -hmm. And the question is, when you are going through your traumatic experience, uh, did you feel that there were places you can go that people would understand and would people would be able to help you and protect you and, 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 and give you that level of support that you, that you needed? Um, no, no. I can't say that, that I felt that there were places to go because, I mean, I grew up in church and uh, that would be one of the last places that I would have thought and felt comfortable to go. Okay, we're going to take a break and I want to know why when we come back right after these words from our sponsors. Keep it locked right here to Spotlight. Spotlight is brought to you by Bolo's High Tech Printery, Virgin Island Motors, and Clarence Thomas Limited.
Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Edgy Anchor, and I'm here with Ms. Lynette Smith. She's a member of the Agape Total Life Center. Mr. Akil Johnson is a young author, a Virgin Islander who's been a victim of domestic violence, uh, sexual abuse, and Pastor Simon of the Seventh Day Adventist Church, who's a counselor. And we are bringing awareness to domestic violence here in the Virgin Islands. October is Domestic Violence Month, and during this month, we are going to have a conference uh, bringing awareness to domestic violence, to let um, people know what it's all about, how to mitigate it, if they are if they are experiencing it, experiencing it personally, and if they know someone who's experiencing it, how to help them to mitigate that particular circumstance. And the conference is coming up on the 12th and 13th of October and it's going to be held in the Anglican Church. We're going to give some more details uh, as we go along. But I left off asking Akil about his experience, and it must have been a difficult and a traumatic experience for you uh, during that time. Now, I uh, have late, we've been talking about it uh, every year. Uh, people, we've been bringing awareness to it. Uh, there is more support uh, for the victims, but I imagine that when you were growing up, there must have been a lot of guilt and shame uh, in, in, in involved and in a community that perhaps would have a, would have looked to blame the victim. Mm -hmm. And and you you mentioned before we went to the break that the church would have been the last place you would have thought uh, to sought for support, and that is really. Uh, quite a comment. So, you know, everybody in the world wants to know what that's about. <laughs> well, the first memory that I have of uh, the church and how the church, or the first impression, I should say, that I have of how the church, um, and at least in this in particular case, because I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but in this particular case, the church that I was going to when I was, um, I think it was 14, um, one of my friends uh, in the church had confided in me that her uh, f stepfather, who was a minister in the church, was molesting her. And um, she told me that it was um, getting to be too much for her to deal with And We were children because she was around my age too. And I remember we were sitting in the cafeteria and I, was, I couldn't believe that she had just told me what she had told me. And, I thought about it uh, for a long time because she told me not to tell anybody and I thought about it for a while and then I started to think about what she must have had to go through every time she went home with him and what the situation was because they were foster children and um, the, the, uh, the minister and his wife had adopted um, them as a family and she didn't want to um, tell this this the start that was happening to her because she knew that she would risk breaking up them as a family and her sister her older sister um, uh, I think had some sort of idea of what was going on and she also put pressure on her not to say anything because they were living pretty well they, you know they they were you know living in a nice house and everything much better than what, what they were accustomed to and she didn't want to she know so she had that burden that she was carrying of that and so I decided after um, some time had passed to confide in the pastor um, about what she had told me. And um, that didn't really go, that, that didn't go too well. Uh, but briefly, what was the result? Uh, the what was pastor, the result? The pastor, how was the pastor reaction? Well, um, the minister was asked to step down um, from the, uh, his services, and um, they there was a lot of confrontation between uh, the, 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 the pastor and the family and so forth, and myself and my uh, mother was brought into it, into meetings, and it was just a messy and situation. Your friend, and what, then did, did your friend feel a sense of betrayal because oh, yeah. you confronted? Well, well uh, I didn't even see her because she wasn't brought back. They had stopped coming to the church. It was, um, I think that there, she was pulled out of the church. You caused a whole bunch of confusion in the church. 
<laughs> well, it wouldn't be I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I shouldn't laugh. But I, I need to be serious about right. this. Yeah, this is a serious matter. Right. But that, so in, in essence, the, the mere revelation of mm -hmm. the incident caused uh, a, a consternation oh, yeah. in, in the church, and, yeah. and you felt and you felt that it was totally mismanaged. Yeah, and I, there were there, the there were a lot of members of the church who were angry with me because I guess they felt like I should have not said anything um, about it. So, how is uh, how is the church going to? Because this is not this is not the the only story, mm -hmm. uh, and I've heard stories, and the church. And the, the pastors, uh, the members of the church, uh, it's been said that they are gossipy. Uh, and then they are supposed to be Christians, but they they seem to relish in the fact that somebody have uh, has a problem, and they, they don't they don't come to, to to rally around that person and embrace them and protect them and and, and, and provide the support. You know, they sort of like almost bring bring them out into the open and without consideration to the psychological trauma, the emotional trauma that that might present. How is the church? Uh, what will the church do to try to? to change that perception of, of itself. As a matter of fact, one of the topics for the conference is um, the effects on children, of, on children, domestic violence have on children. And it's, uh, again, to bring awareness that this, this evil affects everybody. It just doesn't affect the persons that is it's happening to, or the person that is actually doing the, the the harm to the other person. But it affects the children in the home, directly, indirectly, and as they grow up, you find that different children may act differently. It has different effects on them in their own relationships as they grow up. So we recognize that um, there's more that the church can do as a whole in order to help to eradicate and to bring more awareness and bring accountability to the members, to society in dealing with domestic violence. And you know, you said that it's not a laughing matter. And yes, we understand that it's, it is not a laughing matter. But we also recognize that in our small community that a lot of gossiping goes on. A lot of people talk, people talk about everything. They, but a lot of times people talk because they don't know how to come up. They don't have the solutions. They don't have the tools to, to, to help resolve the situation. So what do they do instead? They do what they know how to do, which is talk about it and talk about it not in the right way, but in the wrong way. So we're hoping that this conference would help people, as I said, to get those skills that they need to, eat, to help our society, help our people to help to eradicate so that the Akims, Akims, Akil, 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 <coughs> that we have wouldn't have to go through and deal with and, stuff and, like and that. And we'll feel safer and, and we'll more secure in, in coming and forward and, coming and, and, and exactly. talking about it. What's, um, what do what you think about uh, what Sister Lynette has said and what the experience has been from where you sit in, in your church? Yeah, well, I, I totally agree with her. And uh, even before I get into that, I just want to say as a minister myself, as a pastor and myself, you know, that I feel, you know, I'm very saddened in terms of Akil's friend situation, in terms of to realize that she was a victim and Akil himself, you know, um, you know, you know, there's certain pain that is well up in me because as a church, we have to be protective of the victim. And, you know, that was a minister of Christ you know he always protected those who couldn't protect themselves and to help those who couldn't help themselves and that is the role of the church uh, uh, to protect victims and make sure that and it's good that the law is coming even more forceful you know to make sure that that happens too in that it's uh, mandated 
that if you have knowledge as a pastor or a helping professor, a professional, that you have to report that you know uh, to the authorities. And so that coming into being is also a good thing, you know, um, to help to make sure it shouldn't have to be because in terms of uh, the church, you know, should take care of its own, you know, business in defending the weak because that is one of the primary functions of the church in terms of to look about the outcasts and to help those who are, you know, um, you know, abused and so forth. And so we definitely have to, you know, um, do a better job at that to make sure that uh, members are protected and one victim is one too much and that we can, you know, um, give a response of support so that a person wouldn't feel as if, well, the church is the last place. I believe that the church should be the first place where, well, where, where individuals should want to go. Well, that's what the, my next question is, how are you going to build that trust? Because it seems to me that the church has, a, I mean, I'm talking about the church as a body, has a trust issue. And, and when, when a church, when a body, uh, uh, the church has a trust issue, that that's a very that's a very serious matter. Is it is it is it a misperception? Uh, uh, more should be done to let the community know that the church is safe, the church is accountable, uh, the church has uh, policies and procedures, the, the church is programmatic in addressing the domestic violence issue and other social issues as well. I mean, how 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 you intend how you intend to get those persons? Mm -hmm. To feel confident and comfortable coming to members of the church, to the leaders of the church, to say, listen, I'm in a situation that I need some help and I need some support, uh, but I also don't want to be on public display at this time. How, why, why, how are you going to get me to trust you? Well, in terms of our the, the the next episode, you know, that happens in terms of our responding in the correct way, in terms of giving the support, you know, um, if Akil was coming out to say that his past had supported him and that he was there with him and he made a big difference, that would have been a great plus for the church. But you know, it's a converse that he's saying, and so every single victim that is supported, you know, when that silence is broken and you know the uh, spotlight is put. <coughs> on the church, then if we have done due diligence, then, you know, um, that, and, you know, um, I'm not saying that this is the ex exception, but not every case is handled like this of necessity, because, you know, uh, just like, you know, in the church, you have individuals who are wheat and individuals who are tears, and there have been cases that have been handled correctly in terms of reporting and so forth, and to make sure that the authorities are informed and to give support. And so that is happening, but every time you know something goes wrong if you know and that's the time it gets into the newspaper that's a time when it's blown up and so sometimes you can have you know few bad cases that that becomes a benchmark or what people see and hear you know and we have to correct that because even one case is too many in terms of that but you know we just have to make sure that we continue to educate we continue to make the church safe you know one of the things that uh, we have done in our own organization is just to make make sure that individuals who are working, especially with the young people, that, you know, they have to fill out a questionnaire and make sure that, you know, if we pick up evidence that, you know, they have any inkling, then those individuals would be debarred from working, you know, with the youth and that kind of stuff. So we, we're not only waiting for someone to blow the whistle, we are trying, you know, to make sure that, you know, um, things are taken care of by screening and making sure that those who are working with children that, you know, they, they're there to protect and not to prey, not to become predators, you know, on, on the children. You, uh, obviously, it seems as though Agape recognize that uh, this is a challenge. Building trust for the church and the community is a challenge um, because, you know, you're talking about educating the clergy about the role of the church in dealing with domestic violence. Uh, you're increasing uh, uh, awareness about domestic violence and its destructive behavior and the destructive effects on, on families. So you must be thinking along the lines of giving professional training to the church, to yourselves, so that 
that professionalism will come through in the community, make you more accountable, and build trust between the church and the community. First of all, Carmel, I want to say that um, for every one person that you hear out there that the church didn't help or that something went wrong, mm -hmm. there are probably 10 or 15 others that the church did help, that the pastors did help, that the pastor did, did counsel. Because a lot of pastors in the BVI and churches in the BVI, they do counsel people, they do help people, but it's not broadcast. Only the one or two you may have heard something, and most of the times when you hear those things, it isn't coming from the pastors. It's probably coming from family members or somebody else who has who knows about the situation, and they go talking about what it is. So then it, it sheds a bad light on the church. But um, I firmly believe that the, the churches and the pastors and the church, they do have a heart for the people. They have a heart for helping the people and so forth. So the conference, yes, we recognize that there is a problem in the BVI and we want to do our part from my Gapitota Light Center. We want to do our part to really make sure that um, we give as much information as possible and help to build upon what is already there. Most, as um, Pastor Simon said, most of the pastors have uh, some sort of training as it pertains to counseling, maybe basic training, but a lot of them probably don't have um, opportunities to really go and do more. And I think that a conference like this that gives this kind of information to the community as a whole, not just pastors, but the community as a whole, gives people great information and great tools that they can walk away with and say, you know, Listen, I can recognize when somebody is being abused. I can recognize and maybe point them in the right direction or something of that sort. So yes, we do recognize there's a problem in the BVI as a whole, and it's there for everyone to see. It's on the newspapers, it's on the, in the, on the television, it's wherever you turn, you see it. So we recognize that, is, that there is a problem. Now what we would want to see now is that the church have a more active role. Yes, you deal with those people that come to you, but we want pastors and ministers and Christians on a whole, people who call themselves um, Christian, who, who love the Lord and, and committed to Jesus Christ. We want those people to also be ministers wherever they work, wherever they go, and they can also have the information that they can help somebody or point them to somebody else who has the knowledge, experience, and expertise to help them and, and get them out of these situations. Okay. I noticed that uh, the conference has uh, several sessions uh, on the topics of uh, Lord I want to be happy, uh, how to act right when your spouse acts wrong, the emotionally destructive relationship, domestic violence and its effects on our children, and the role of the church in dealing with domestic violence. Those are some of the discussions yes. that the conference is going to have. Correct. Right? Uh, I'm hoping that we could elaborate on them a little and, and what the outcome is that is expected from these, these topics mm -hmm. when one attends the conference. We'll do that when we come back from this break. This program is sponsored by the law firm of J.S. Archibald & Co. and by the trust company J.S. Archibald Trust Services Limited, both of Rotown Tortola BVI.